right, so in this video we're going to try and cover as much as possible. We'll go from logging into the admin panel to adding products and categories, placing an order on the front end, viewing that order in the back end, and looking over some of the settings that our module has, as well as the reports, and then looking into more of the general settings that Magento offers for your store. So we'll assume that you signed up for the free trial, or if you already purchased and we installed it for you, we'll send you the same information. So it will show you your URL and also your admin URL. The URL is the customer side, where your customers will print products from. The admin side is where we're going to be doing most of the work for entering categories, products, and settings. So go ahead and click on that. And we're going to copy and paste the password. So control C. The username is admin, so you just want to put in admin and then control V or to paste your password and go into the admin panel. So the admin panel is going to have your sales, products, the rental area where you can set your settings, um, the customer area where you can manage your customers and so forth. So let's go ahead and first start with entering our product categories. So from here you have your default category. Just think of that as your root. It's not actually a, a real category. What you're going to want to do is add subcategories to it. So let's click add subcategory and we'll just go ahead and call this category computers and save it. So you could also add subcategories to the category you made by clicking on add, sub, add subcategory again. If you want to add more main categories you click the default category and click add subcategory. So you could have a bunch of main categories and then some subcategories which would be drop down menus on your front end website. So let's add a product. That's under products catalog and you'll notice there's an add product button here. You can add different types of products. Uh, we're going to be adding a reservation product or a rental. However Magento, the platform that we're, our module is for, can add other kinds of products such as simple products or for sale products configurable products, which would be ones that have different sizes or options, uh, a bundle, which could have a bunch of different products within it, so you could configure it. But let's add a reservation product. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and first add the price. We're going to say that it costs $5 for one day or one D. You can have different periods. It shows you here how to add those. They can be weeks, months, uh, even minutes or hourly rentals. So for example, if instead I wanted to have a price for five days, I could put 5D, or if I wanted this to be for one week, I could put 1W or two weeks, put 2W, and so forth. But let's just go ahead and do one day rental, $5, and it automatically calculates prices after that. Um, you could even add more if you want. If you wanted to have a, a one week price as well, you could put 1W here. So let's just leave it simple, $5 for one day now. We're going to go ahead and leave the rental product type to reservation. Product name, we're just going to call it a uh, MacBook Pro. And use times, that's if you want hourly based rentals. For this product, we're going to leave that as disabled. But if you wanted to have, for example, a product that you rent from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., you would want to enable this. Um, serial numbers, that's if you want to track each individual item separately. Um, that could also be used for barcodes, so you would enable that and then add those here if you're going to do that. We're going to leave that off for now. And then we'll just put in a uh, weight, one pound for now. And the categories, so that's the category that we just added, we'll set it to the computers category. We'll leave it visible. Um, so that's all you really need to do for entering a product. There are a lot of uh, more specific options that we can get into later. Uh, about the t turnover times before and after. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about what exclude dates mean. Those are disabled dates. Uh, so we'll leave those the same for now. Let's just go ahead and save the product. All right, so that's saved. Let's go to the home page, refresh, and we'll see the computers category. Click on that. And then we see this product. I forgot to add an image. If you want to add that, you would go here to Images and Video and click on this button to upload it, but that's okay. So let's just go ahead to our product and rent it. So let's rent it from March 15th through 18th and go through the checkout process. So that's in the cart now. Let's just see what it'd be like from the customer experience. So you go through the checkout. 
just autofill that. And there's only one payment method enabled. We'll show you how to configure those later, as well as the shipping methods, how that works. So that order's been placed. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like for the email that the customer should get. So we'll see there, there's our order confirmation with the rental dates and the product that was ordered that we added in the admin panel. So let's go to the back end. So we'll go to sales, orders, and we'll see the order that was just placed. You can go ahead and view that. And it shows all the same order information that we already saw in the email. Um, you can add order comments towards the bottom here if needed. So you can go ahead and ship this, uh, or you could think of that as checkout. And then after that ship button has been pressed, you can also click the return button um, later on and then return the products to your inventory. Um, so how does the inventory reservation work? It's not really based on the ship and return. It is based on these reservation dates that are here. However, there are settings that allow you to use the ship and return dates instead if, for example, you ship it early or return it late. All right, so now let's go ahead and look at the settings that our module has under rentals, settings, and explain those briefly. So there are quite a few. We won't be able to go over all of them, but we'll go over the most important ones. The max and minimum rental period. So if you had a minimum rental period, you could set that here. It's in the same kind of format as the price was. So you could put, for example, 5D for five days, and that's explained here. Turnover time, that's one of the more important ones to understand. That would be the time before the rental start date for turnover time before that the product is not available for. So it's kind of like a buffer or padding. Uh, for example, if the reservation date was March 15th and you put one day before, then that reservation inventory is booked out for March 14th as well. The same goes for after. So you could use that to allow time for, if you're shipping products, to ship them and return them. Uh, it could also be used for cleaning or maintenance. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the store hours. Um, this would be your store open and close times, which is particularly important if you're doing reservations by hourly. So the store open time would be a when a customer could start reserving an hourly rental. If you scroll down here, there's a place where you can add excluded dates, which are for holidays or uh, things like that. So you would just click add and disable it from and to, like the from date, say if it's closed for Christmas, you could put December 25th and then December 26th for the end date or December 25th end of day, or you could just put all day there. So exclude from calendar price and turnover. Um, calendar would mean the customer cannot choose it on the calendar. Price would mean it's not counted in the price reservation. And turnover would mean that it's not counted as a turnover day as we just saw before. So those are probably the most important settings. Um, there are quite a few more in here that you can take a look at and configure it to your liking. So let's go ahead now and look at the reports. You can see there's a few in here. The inventory report is one of the most important. Let's also go ahead and open in a new tab here, the by order, to see what that is. So we'll go ahead and look at the inventory report. And when you're on this page, the inventory report, you'll see the product that we added, as well as the time that it's not available. On the March 15th through the 17th, when you click on that, it will show you a little pop-up with who reserved it. Now, on the by order type calendar, we can see here it's uh, exactly what's showing by order. So when you click on that, it'll also give you the details of who ordered it on those dates. Of course, that will be filled in with more orders as your store progresses along. Let's go ahead and look at the general settings now. This is more of a general Magento area, but the settings for your store. We'll look at the payment and shipping settings. Of course, there's a lot more. Uh, for example, under general, you can set your store information, your name, phone number, hours of operation, um, so let's go to the sales and shipping methods first. So let's say you wanted to change that. You could perhaps change that to pick up and store if you wanted to. Or if you wanted to enable some live shipping rates, you could perhaps use UPS and check that and set that to enabled. If you wanted to offer UPS shipping, and then you could choose the rates that are available. Okay, for payment methods, let's look at that too. So these would be the payment methods that are allowed to use your store. 
Uh, of course, it's going to push PayPal pretty heavily here. So you can set that up if you want to um, and enable that under configure and put in your PayPal email address. And under the other payment methods down here, these are the ones that are by default built into Magento 2. Um, check money order, which is enabled right now. Um, bank transfer payment, which just gives instructions for transferring payments to your bank and so forth. Thank you for watching this quick overview of how the Magento 2 rental booking system works from Sales Igniter. Uh, please check back in the future. We will be continuing to add YouTube videos and more information to our documentation as well as new features to our module.